Okay, so the recording actually just started now um, after the review. Thank you for the reminder. Um, so one question that anonymous at 822, where do you have negative 145? Where do you, where do you have negative 145? Um, uh, what is your question? Anonymous, uh, we call them open balance of zero, but they have an amount of 600. Well, Rabbi Cohen, Rabbi Cohen's, if you look again at his invoice, it was six invoice of 600. His payment was 400, and that leaves us 200 to be paid. So I'm not, I don't understand why, you, if you have those two numbers, it doesn't show up. But we'll have to move on and we'll, we'll discuss this personally uh, later on. The only thing is, if it up, perhaps you received the 200, but you didn't apply it to his invoice. I'm not sure, the 400, I'm not sure how you did it. Okay, dismiss this one. Okay, so one's asked if I could minimize the left-hand ribbon here. So we just did that. Okay, so now we have more space on the screen. And Mr. Gold is asking about, um, let's see. Are we, are we asking that oh yeah number seven two items are expenses not sales number seven seven is expenses that's essence of sushi but um what you're asking about bearish and five ish those are sales receipts that's number eight so your number and your and your detail is uh, not lining up. Okay. Again, questions, how to set up companies is not for here at this time. That's down the road. Right now we're trying to teach you how to follow a uh, path and what we're doing. Okay. One thing I'm gonna point out right now, because this question came with some people, is I go back to step in step number five and enter bills. So we have the office supplies was expense. The national goods expense. I wasn't clearly spoken before, but again, I can't take anything for granted. Copy machine, computer, and office furniture. I wrote that it's furniture and equipment. We never discussed at that point how to add a new category. We don't add a new category because if you just type in, and if you look at the chart of accounts, control A, Chart of accounts does have furniture and equipment. If you tap F, it's furniture. You type E, you come to equipment. Those are not expenses. That's an asset. This is, is the lead to our second part of the class. People started discussing what's the depreciation, why is a computer desk not an expense? We'll discuss that. The point is that if you had taken your computer and your copy machine and you put it as an expense, you created the furniture expense, Equipment expense that would change how your income and your PL would work, your profit and loss, because your profit and loss is your income and your expenses. But if you if you categorize it as an asset, that is on your balance sheet. We're going to explain that. That's balance sheet is the equation of assets equals liability and owner's equity. That's what the company is worth. So it's not an expense. So you have more income, it stays on your company's balance sheet and your company's worth more. So 
if right now would be the time to look what how you categorized Office Depot, Computer, and Amazon. Um, Office Depot, Amazon, and Staples. Double click on the invoice. If it shows that you create an expense, go back in the drop down. We'll go to vendors center. I'll show you what to do. You would go to, in this case, Amazon. If you went to your bill, which was five hundred dollars, and you you put in the furniture equipment, you'll see here on the right side it's a fixed asset. The furniture sits there; it doesn't run away. And if you create an expense, well, based on over here, you created furniture expense. Go back and just change it to fixed asset, and then everything will be okay. Hopefully, if that's the only issue you have. Okay. I believe we're going to go over to the reports now. So the report gives us where we're holding. Are we making money or losing money? And the answer is we are losing money, but we have a lot of uh, investment. And right now we're not going to have to buy furniture every day. We're not going to have to buy uh, what's it called? Masks every day. We stocked up on that. And we already paid our rent for one or two months. Right? We paid them a one month rent and two months security. Well, let's assume now you prepaid three months of rent because security, again, is not an expense. Security is an asset. You get it back, so it's not lost. How, so if we went to do our reports, we would go to report and drop down. And I said, we could take the two standards. In the company financial, you have profit and loss standard, and you have balance sheet standard. So I have here first, it's p &L, or in short, in short for profit and loss. And I go to my P profit and loss standard, and automatically it's only showing me May. So someone told me how come they have different numbers in their income, negative 791. That is because it's only showing May, 2020. I go up over here and I press my Y shortcut. Y brings me to the beginning of the year. It's still going to be the same thing. Why is it still going to be the same thing? Because my company really technically started building business in May. So even if I go back to April, I go back to March, it's not going to change my income. However, if, I'm, if I go back to last year, I'll type Y again. It's going to bring me a second here. Um, I press Y a second time. It brings me back another year. So Y the first time brings you to the beginning of the current year. Again, Y brings you back to the beginning of the previous year. This reminds you of, you know, the Y, y is the beginning of the word year. It takes you to the beginning. Had you typed the R from year, it will bring you to 1231, which is the end of the year. But right now we're in Y, which is the beginning of the year. And now it's correctly seven, negative 721 because we have another $70 that we backdated specifically for this reason, to show you how you backdate income. Not because you could, you could backdate income, the IRS is actually happy when you claim more income earlier because they get to charge tax on it. But the real reason is because hopefully we could show you what retained earnings is like. So right now we have, as I said, in step number 10, Net income should be negative 721 if everything's correct. So this is your sales income. This is the numbers that you'll check. Another way of checking your invoice, if you double click on 1780, you would have all the invoices you ever generated in the past two classes. You have a $70 and it goes according to time. We have a 1228 and we have all the ones from 513. We added more in 518 we added um, Holtz Clapper. But yet at 5.8, we also back there at 12.28. All the income is 17.80. If you do not have 17.80 in, in, um, in invoices, then you have an error. So <coughs> if I was updating my curriculum, that's what I would do. At the end of step eight, I will tell you, check your invoices for 17.80. So I could stop you at, seven, at step eight and see that you are correct. Likewise, if I were to double check my expenses, we'll get there shortly, this, there's no 
See, income, everything comes together. There is a way to check total vendors. We'll get to that shortly. We have advertising promotion. That was Ami. We have 120. That was a combined of Super 13. And Essence, we have 177 for office supplies from Ness. We have 1,500 from office rentals. That was rent 328 from, from uh, Electric. That was the national, that was Connecticut and Gaza on 26. Total utilities we get is what, 454. Four, Here's my total expense, 2501. And the difference between 2501 and 1780 is 721. So now we understand how to do a PL. That is more straightforward. Everyone, everyone understands. You deposit money, you take out money, and you're over. Now, we're not, the negative 721 is different from the negative 77 of the bank. That's an important distinction. The company as a company is running 721 uh, negative for the year. You would say the company is in the red. The company is in the red because you have more expenses than income. But the bank is not necessarily in the red for the same amount because we borrow money from people to cover our expenses. We remember we, in the beginning, we put in $500 into the bank of our own. We also paid some expenses with Shimon. Now, our, you would, our expenses, again, double check the number, just like at double check 1780, expense should be 2581, 2501. Someone showed me that they have some furniture expense. If your furniture expense shows up here, you got to reclassify it. You have to double click on it and it will give it to you in a different window and you will double click on it again. And that's when it will bring you into your transaction where you can uh, go drop down and change it. It's not an expense. Furniture is, as I said, a fixed asset. So if you, again, if your numbers are correct, your furniture is not, and equipment is not in your expenses, you're negative 721. Now we're gonna go over to the balance sheet, which I believe I even still have open from last time, my drop down. That's the good thing about the software as opposed to a tab in the, and you go, when you do in the browser, you go back before, you go back, that's it. You gotta regenerate your reports here. I'm here in the balance sheet. Now, if I did any changes that would affect the balance sheet or the profit and loss, well, that's when it tells you refresh needed. So what I do with a click of this will be in parentheses, refresh needed, and you would refresh it. In this case, as of May 16, you see, as of May 16, you still have $500 in the bank. I'm gonna press here T, which is for today. And today it's negative 77, that's the number. So the net in the income was negative 721, but the bank is negative 77. Accounts receivables is 415. 415 is an asset. You see here's a header called assets. That's the A. We're gonna have two more headers called liabilities and equity, and that breaks it down to liabilities and equity. And if you notice these two numbers, 2562, at the bottom is 2562. This is the equation we learned at the beginning of the first class and we reviewed A equals L plus OE, or L plus and E. It has to match, there's no way. The asset, the company is zero. Their, their assets is, is really fictitious. What does the company have? It's nobody. We created a name, we do it all. We, as people, we invest money in the company, we provide services, and then the company has money in the bank, but eventually we wanna pay back the liabilities to people we borrowed, and the equity, the owners wanna take back what they, what they deserve, and when they take out, and this number becomes zero because they pay the liabilities, and they withdrew from the company what they wanted, assets will also be zero because company was liquidated. Now at this point, 4.15, you double click, and you will see, okay, the time period for default is only from today, 5.25.20. I press Y, which is the whole year, or in this case, let's say we did M. Actually, I have to go first back to this year. Press T for today, press M for month, it brings back the beginning of the month. And I see here my, Invoice, so this doesn't show me Holtz Clapper and it does not show me 
um, five ish because there were never invoices in the first place. Sales receipts will not be in your accounts receivables ever. It's your income. You could double click it on your income and your PL, but in, in your accounts receivables, it will not show up. Where does it show up? Well, when you go into account receivables, it gives you the debits and the credits. If you remember the debits in an asset, debits in an asset is how it increases. So our original high ankle was an invoice of 225. But against that, he paid 150. And that's why he only owes us 225. And the same thing, Mrs. Cook never has 140. She never paid anything. Rabbi Cohen had 600. Against that, he paid 400. So that's why his invoice is 200. 275 is 275. And where we have gone further, we have 670 was paid 670. So again, the 200 from the Cohen, the 75 difference, 275, and the 140 of Mrs. Cook would never pay anything, that nets out to the 415. So you have debits is where you create the receivables, credits is where you eliminate the receivables. What happens first, the debit would have gone to undeposited funds because it's another asset that moves from, and it, it goes in stages. First, you create an invoice. So you, you want to collect the invoice, it's an asset. You receive the money and the debit becomes undeposited funds because you have the money and you credited the invoice. Then again, we're gonna deposit in the bank. So we're gonna debit bank and we're gonna credit the, well, it's like we're gonna credit the something else. Let me get out of here. But again, we don't do the debits and credits. QuickBooks does it for itself automatically when you use their forms. But I'm going through this again because we're gonna go to journal entries. What happens if you wanna buy an expensive car, a car, a car costs $20,000. The money is never gonna get into your bank. You borrow the money from Shimon, he gives you the $20,000 and you go and buy the car. The company has a car and you owe Shimon. You're not gonna put the money in your bank, right? So, you, so how is the company all of a sudden gonna record that you have a car and you go Shimon? I'll tell you verbally, but we're gonna do it next time. You're gonna make a journal entry. You go to company and you make general journal entries. And what you have done was you would create an asset called, v, uh, let's see if they even give you one before. Or let's say you wanted to buy expensive furniture. You had to, well, it does make a difference what the asset is. You would put a debit for car. The company now has a car, $20,000. The credit would be Shimon, $20,000 liability. That is why we have to time and time again reinforce how you can do it because there are a lot of journal entries that happen. You go to a closing, you get all these documents where it's showing what you cost, what the cost was and all the different types of monies and expenses you paid out to people. You don't enter this as invoices from one and the other, the other. You could do one journal entry with 20 entries. You're gonna have title closer, you're gonna have the, the, the lawyer fee, you're gonna have the land as a purchases and the same debits will be a mixture. You'll have debits of expenses, you'll have debits of, of, um, of assets, you'll have credits of income, you'll have credits of liabilities. That is, not, that is for next week, but this is just a teaser. The furniture, the furniture is the next asset. Okay, oh, here we have the undeposited funds. You see, undeposited funds is an asset. This is what we collected from, let's go back again to the, to the beginning of the month. Actually, they have to go back to the year because, okay, we have here, what's, what's still undeposited? So it shows check, check, check means it went to the bank. It was in the bank. The two that are not checked are this $70 and this $75, and that's our 145. So this is not just a review, but with the review comes also more insight into how QuickBooks is working. Then you have furniture and equipment. Let's go back again to the beginning of the month. We have here the $1,200 from Office Depot. Amazon are 500 and 379 from Staples. These are our assets. Now that we know what our assets are, let's go over to our liabilities. And when I finish explaining this report, I will go over to answer some questions. So we have here accounts payable. 
accounts payable our, our, our accounts payable is our liabilities. Let's go again. Originally liabilities go up and that's why originally comes up on the credit side. Our liabilities are, well, it was, it was um, the way we entered it actually. So it's Nest Paper, Con Edison, it's not in alphabetical order, but this is the steps we did it until the last one was rent, 1550. Then liabilities are decreased on the debit side and we pay it down. We paid with Chase, it reminds you we paid a check, 1,000 on this paper. Office Depot tells you how we did it. We did it with Shimon's credit card, $1,200. Amazon was with the company credit card, 500. Staples was the company credit card. And Office Rentals was a Chase, $1,500. So if you take all our original expenses were 4,460. Again, when I say expenses, I mean the expenses as accrued. It was accrued 4,460. That is the number which you'll double check. If I would go at the end of step um, five, end of step five, now put all my bills, that's 4,460. I do have more expenses. I still have another $120, that was step seven. But those expenses of $120 was never a payable. Payable is only when you create an invoice. So you create an invoice, which automatically makes it payable, and you have to pay it. But that's extra work. If I'm writing out the check right away, why would I create an invoice for it? Then I have all the payments I went down and my payables are 704. Let's go to the next stop. We have city. City is 879. Why is city 879? We already explained because we paid two items. We paid our $500 and a 379. So in other words, an accounts payable, it shows us what's, what's missing, right? We have 704, we still have to pay the companies. But that is not all we have to pay. Besides payables, we have credit cards of 879. We still have Shimon, the 1200, that doesn't disappear. So we have our liabilities are 2,783. 2,783, we have the 2,079 which are the credit cards, two types of credit cards. And we have another 704, that's 2703. Members equity, okay? Retained earnings is in a corporation. We're using members equity. Members equity is, we're looking at the history. And since we earned last year $70, remember $70 we got from Five-ish, um, Five-ish gave us $70 last year. It's not net income, net income is this year. So that's the difference between members equity and net income. Opening balance, really we created, the, you can use it in a different name, happily the first 500 we put in, we call them members equity. But seven, that's what's gonna happen in the following year. If you, again, I'll go back to our P&L. P&L is our profit and loss. Now we have a negative 721. That is our, for this year, our negative 721. If you go back to our balance sheet, that 721 is our net income, or in this case, it'd be net loss. So balance sheet, you see, you gotta keep your eyes on that 721 net income. It just, it transfers over here. Okay, it's negative 791. Now that 791 is offset by the $70 from, that was paid by five-ish, which will the positive 70 and the negative 791 is 721. As you can see, because we have liabilities of 2783 and our assets are 2562, so our liabilities are more than our assets. So usually you have assets equal to liabilities, right? 2,500 would equal liabilities, but since liabilities is more, we create a negative number for the equity. If you take the negative number for equity, that will bring down the liabilities. So therefore what we have to do is I said, 
Step 10, I'm gonna do two things. But number one, I'm gonna put in $250. $250 is not only gonna cover the bank, right? Because the bank is negative 77, but that 250 is also gonna have the purpose of giving us a positive net equity, a positive inequity. So what are we gonna do? I have step 10 of my paper. One, yeah, step 10. After we reviewed and we created our reports, we're gonna to go to deposit $250 personal money. Again, there's two ways I can do this. As in everything, I said there's more ways. Either I'll go to make deposits, make a deposit. And I'm gonna press cancel because I'm not using this one. I'm just gonna go received from. And I'm gonna write, uh, assuming my name was Ruven. Let's see, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll type Ruven. And I'm gonna go, there's, there's no person Ruven, right? So I'm gonna press add new. Ruven is not a vendor, he's not a customer, he's not an employee, he's me. I'm gonna put him on other list, for example. And I'm just gonna press okay. Okay, let's see, let's try again, uh, Uvein, quick add. add. Okay, quick add as an other. Now, what account am I adding it for? Where's the money coming from? So the money is gonna come from members' equity. Members' equity, we're putting in more money. Members' draw is where I take out money. Members' equity is where I put in money. So we're gonna put in, and we're just gonna go straight to the end, and I put in 250. Okay, and it shows us deposit subtotal is 250. So this is one way to make a deposit. You see from Ruvain, it's members equity, $250. I could have just done nothing. I didn't have to even see where the money came from, just gone to members equity. But account is a required field. You always have to put in an account, that's a must, because QuickBooks needs to know, is this an asset as equity? Is it an expense, is it a liability? The amount could be zero and then you would be a zero, but account is required field. The date will be today. So now it's gonna be 520. Okay, save and close. So I'm gonna wait over here and give everyone a chance to catch up. They could deposit that money, 250 as I did. Ruvain, members equity, 250. You're about to post to retain earnings account members equity. So they, they, sometimes they call it members equity, but it's really retained earnings because that's really what it is. Retained earnings is the term we use for net income of previous years. So on the balance sheet, it takes the net income from the P&L, which is this year's profit. It adds it to the bottom line on the balance sheet as members, as net, as members equity for this year. And then next year, that whatever was, was merged, the previous money were merged together into a line called members equity or retained earnings. Okay, and you can see now, Baruch Hashem, we have a positive 29 because it was negative 221, we put it to 50, 229, and you go back to the bank. The bank, Baruch Hashem, has money. We have $173, and now we can mail out the check. You see, we never were really in danger. We wrote out the check to office rentals, we didn't mail it out. Now we can actually mail out the check to office rentals. We will have money in the bank, we have positive equity. And now I'll go over to a couple short questions and then we'll go over to chapter two. Okay, so this is for Cheryl, who asked me a question about negative 500 from Amazon. Um, if, the, if your question was not answered yet, please stick around for a quarter to 10, thank you. Um, now I'm an attendee, I'm not, I'm not following your, your chain, so I don't know how you edit what mistake. Um, someone has a net negative 2870, most likely I have expenses that should be assets, so that I think we answered that question as we went along. Okay. I could send my profit and loss in the email after the class. 
The PO is going to be the summary of everything we did, and it's going to slightly change based on what we discussed in chapter two. That's fine. Can you open up the 1710 so you see what did wrong? It's for Mr. Goldman. Uh, the, you, it's really 1780, and I said you have to you have to make the report show last year as well. Don't show only this year or this month. You go to the top of the report. Again, we'll go back to profit and loss. Report. It gives you a pay period. You can pick anywhere you want. You could check a quarter. You know, you say, I want to check this fiscal year. I'm going to go to that also. That's how you cost us reports. Quickly. One click, it gives you the whole year. So it's negative 70, 91. That's what it is. If you only look at this year. But if you take all, it becomes 721. And same thing, the 1780 is all 721. If I go this fiscal year, it goes to 1710. We will analyze reports at more length next week. Right now, we're finishing a cycle of accounting. Okay, let's go back to the questions. Um, okay, 850, 850 Anonymous is asking, um, p and doesn't show the sales income column. Are you talking about, on, your, on the, my end, on my end, my p &L is showing, I have income, old income, that's what I got. This is actually a standard, which is, which is a summary, we're gonna learn later on. You could go, the first place you go to detail, right? If you want to know from the beginning, you want to know your detail. So I'll give you the report to begin with. They'll tell you what your sales income is in the breakdown. I don't have to double click on it each time. You could scan through, but again, companies usually don't want to know what their income was over the year from a thousand transactions one by one. They want to see what was the total number. So that's why the standard is give me the, give me the number and you can always go into detail. Members equity again is what the owner has invested in the company. That's from with that's uh, liabilities is money that you borrow from people outside the company have no interest. And those people have no benefit other they lend you money. They get no profit. Maybe they get interest in their, on their money, but they lend the company money. And that's where they have the first claim to when a company is going with the bankruptcy, you pay, you can't, you have to satisfy the liabilities first. Equity is the owner of the company or the stockholders. You, you, ha you, you have shares of the company, so you have equity in the company. So equity is what you can take out of the company and liabilities is what the company has to pay someone else. Someone says they show retained earnings instead of members equity. Maybe you said the company as a corporation, not as a LLC possibly, but you saw it's really the same thing. How to solve duplicates, uh, please stick around to quarter to 10. Ruven, we said is not an employee. So Ruven is me and that is I, you know, to be correct, but correct. I am Ruven and that's why I did not add the name as a vendor or as a customer or employee. Okay. Uh, 859, uh, Shoshana is asking, should you do members equity? And you, want to, you want to rename it? You can go to the account and you can rename it. See, this is all drawing from chart of accounts. Chart accounts has, the equity is called members draw members equity. And the company will probably called retain earnings will be instead of equity. And that is because the company, you can't just pull money out. That's dividends. So we'll discuss that uh, at a different time. Equity is usually reserved for a couple shareholders of a partnership. So different people could put a money, they could make a draw, and just temporarily take the money out of the company. Doesn't mean it's an expense, it's that they're drawing money as a salary and they'll make a cheshbon some time down the road, every quarter or half a year. What did they take out of the company? 
and so they know how much money they earn, how much they're paying taxes for it, etc. Uh, we'll be back here in the questions. Members equity is 70 because that's from last year's money. That's how much money you went from last year. You came into the year with $70 positive. We this year had a 791 negative. Right? So that's why I said in step 10, net income is negative 721 for this year. I'm sorry, negative 721 is for all time. And this year was really 791 net income negative. So I take the 70, the negative 791 from this year, the positive 70 from last year, and we have uh, negative 721. Again, if whoever's numbers are off, we're going to do an audio session after quarter to 10. Again, the, there are two parts of the company. It's what we do this year in business and that you pay tax every single year. The IRS wants their money every year. People in the company want to know if they're making a profit. That's every year and the public companies have to make reports every quarter, every three months. Now, balance sheet is what the company is worth. Like I said, you could have made only 5,000 this year due to the coronavirus, but you made a million dollars last year. And when you were going to the bank for a loan, you don't want to show this year's money. You want to tell the bank, I'm a company that makes a million dollars. And you could see that because on my balance sheet, I have a million dollars in the bank. Or you could see I have receivables uh, of, of $2 million. And it's going to come. It's just that in my P&L, I did very little business this year because of the shutdown. We're, we're away for, you know, whether it was the holidays, it was the shutdown, everything else. But now, after Shavuos, companies, the country's opening up. We're going to be booming. We're going to make millions of dollars. Balance sheet is a total snapshot of the value of the company. It takes everything. In this case, so far, we only have the bank and we only have furniture. You might have had a house, you might have vehicles. That's historical. That's the assets. And the same way that I could be my vehicles I purchased three years ago, my, my, my uh, land I bought 15 years ago and then I appreciated it and I, I got a lot of money in appreciation. The same thing as assets equals owner's equity and liability. So you have to show what is the money that we have learned over the years. Now, the one caveat that in a company, retained earnings company about dividends. So even though you have all the income from years before, like last year we have $70 in profit, so the net income of 70 shows up now. If I was a company and I wanted to give a distribution of a dividend $70, so then the company will have zero retained earnings because we gave away whatever was previously held. We gave away those $70. And we start this year from zero. Answer live. Okay, this is for ZC that we, we, we did the end of step number 10. We said deposit 250 personal money. Personal money, we're increasing our equity. Okay, so that takes care of that. 250 again. Now I could also, if I again, if I'm here on a report page, I said this is not every page you can do control R to get you to the bank because if you're in another re if you're in another window which is a register, it'll click you to sub register. I go here, control the R, it'll show me Chase. I could have done the same thing. I would go into straight to deposit. I would have just typed in 250 as I did. I'll type in members equity and I will press tab and then or alt D and I would have made the record the recording. So again, I could go in directly into the bank. See, we had like 77, put 250. Now we have 173. I could also go to banking, make deposits. That's another way I could do it. Again, and make deposits to bring me up these two people. And you know, while we're here, we'll just put that money in the bank also, why not? We have money from last year. Why wasn't that a bank last year? Let's do one at a time because it's not currently. I'll go, okay. And I'm going to put back 1228, just to, uh, 19, just to get the money from, from last year. And I'm going to, whenever you do a transaction that's more than 90 days in the past or 30 days in the future, 
QuickBooks is going to assume you did a mistake. And they're going to ask you, are you sure you want to make the change? This is because usually if you're working in a company, you're not more than three, three months behind. Especially in public companies where you have to give reports every three months, you can go back uh, more than 90 days. But that wouldn't answer you in the last month. The last month could be only 30 days behind. But you can change these preferences as th these settings and preferences. We'll learn that another time. Anyway, I'm, I'm making this change. And press cancel here to save. Okay, I didn't get in the way. To do it again, we're going to run through it again, make deposit. Uh, take now holds clockers money, but he gave it a 518, so I'm not going to keep last year's date. Quick way is just go T, just today, and go two minuses. Quick way of making the date. Okay, this is also a review of the shortcuts, how you use them. We didn't do it, but I've been reinforcing in class. Control A, let's finish this, save and close. And now we have an addition. We went back, we put the $70 in from last year. We put in the $75 here on deposited funds. Now our bank balance is 318. So at the end of tonight's class, your bank balance is 318. We're gonna hold this. 318 is actually the number of uh, Matthew Eliezer. Some people feel that they really need Eliezer right now. Um, let's see what we're holding over here. Um, that's the, that's for banks. So shortcuts again. Control A is control card accounts. Control I is invoice. Control R is the register. In this case, if I was by a vendor, okay, if I was by a vendor and I press Control R and Ken Edison, it wouldn't bring me to bank. Well, in this case, it would be um, brings me to bank option, but there are times that it doesn't give it to you, so don't be scared. And Control W is write a check. A check. Control Y is to see the journal entry, the debits and the credits. Okay, we had here plus or minus means you add a day, you minus a day, or a check number, assuming the check number is highlighted. So for example, if I do Control W and the check number is highlighted, I'll do plus, we'll add a number, go minus, or take off a number. But if I wasn't highlighted, then do plus, uh, let's see, in this case, could work. If I press the minus, it'll give me a minus. It won't change it. Plus, probably it's that smart because usually you don't find a plus in numbers or references, but you could potentially have an address. You could have a minus, and that's why we'll put it there. Anyway, I'm clearing that one. Same thing with the date. I add plus, it's going to give you 519, 520, or go minus, sends me backwards. Again, if I press H, it's the end of the month, 531. H again will give me 630, etc. And the same thing by week. Now, week doesn't always mean seven days in your case because they the you don't have a calendar in your head. You think you have to go. Now I'm 731. I'm gonna go K. It's gonna move me seven days later. It's not gonna do that. It'll move me one day later. But now if I press K again, it will take me to 8-8, which is a week later. That's because QuickBooks it takes a week from the calendar, Sunday to Friday. If I was plus an 8.9 and I press K, it would only be me six days further to 8.15 because it takes me to the end of the week. So that's pretty simple how to use those shortcuts week and month and year. Every successive press of the K will be another week later or another month later for H, etc. I found tab to be a, it's very helpful, right? We don't, in QuickBooks do data entry, we don't need to use our mouse to go around because what we, what we do is we, we went, for example, I'll do control W and I press tab and I go here and I typed in Con Edison and okay, Con Edison over here. I typed 120, uh, no, we're not writing. See, it tells you I was writing a check to Con Edison and I really have an outstanding bill. Don't just write a check, go to pay bills. So let me clear this out again. Let's say I was going to Ami Magazine, not Amazon, because Amazon's paid. I put $100. And tab for one second. It's not Amazon. It's someone else. What do I do? Do I have to not take my mouse to find me to go back? No, I go shift tab. Shift tab goes reverse. 
just like a car has a forward and reverse. I didn't know this in the beginning and it used to get me nervous, but now that we have the shift tab, it's a very good way of going back and going to reverse without having to take your hands off the keyboard. And again, if I go to here and I want to choose my account, what do I do? I press, uh, let's say electric. So bring me electric. I know that because I know there's an E. But if I didn't know there was an electric, if I know the T, I know this telephone, it could be two. If I don't know what there is to select, I go Alt, I go Alt down and it'll bring me the menu. And this is another way you don't have to go with off your mouse. You go Alt down. Once you have the menu, you go up and down with arrow again. So don't, don't scream at me. You go here. You're in, it's insurance expense, Amazon and insurance. You go Alt down or bring up the window. Then you just use the regular arrows up and down to go through the different types of expenses. I'm clearing this. We reviewed the shortcuts and we're ready to go to chapter two. But first I'll just double check some Q&A and we'll go over to, it's a new concept which some people were asking earlier and it's also important to, to know, you might not be doing it yourself. This might be an accountant, but you should know this for as a bookkeeper. Um, where's the Q and A here? So we, again, at this uh, anonymous, we did the about 250. Why is it only two entries in my deposits? And we dismissed that. I'm not sure what the question is. That's that all that was left. Pause date 1228 that we did for five-ish. So that's not a question, a comment. Member equity is owner equity, yes, because LLCs are members. LLCs are members, that's how you do it. I'm not sure how, I'm not sure how to look at raised hands. So put it down on the Q&A. Let's see, actually I could see, oh, I see that, I see here the raised hands, this is, it's a kalal. Aside from letting it talk, which I'm going to be doing, doing in a half an hour from now, let's see here. Aside, like, we answered that one. You did not pay undeposited for Hose Clapper. We deposited undeposited for Hose Clapper. Okay. Your ending balance is 240 instead of 318. Probably you didn't put in. Again, if you're in the bank register, someone wants to know why do they show ending balance 248? Um, it shouldn't be 248, it has to be 318. So you're, not, you're missing $70, figure out why. Maybe we didn't deposit Tots Club uh, five-ish. Okay. If you put the 250 and you want to associate it with Ruvain, you go back to bank to banking, make deposits, and you would go to a second banking make deposits. Not actually not banking make deposits. It's already deposited. You would go to to Control R, which is your Chase, and you would go here and you add his name Ruvain. So his name is Ruvain. Add his name. So now you can always know where it's from. Yes, I should change. Okay, nothing changed, this is good. Now you have Ruben associated with the, with the deposit. Okay. Click at put in 1228, 2019. It was to show what net income means as opposed to members equity or in a corporation would be liabilities. Okay, that was done. With this here. Okay, last question, my company's an S Corp. Okay, that's the answer, you made it a corporation. So S Corps and Corps are the same, uh, same idea as far as that, but we did, if you remember in step one, you said we're gonna do a general service based LLC whether it's a single member or multi-member, it wasn't Negea. Okay. Now we're ready to go over to a concept called depreciation in chapter two and there's amortization. 
So the way it works is you have a company and you make sales. And then we have purchases. There are many types of purchases, but generally they're in two or three classifications. One of the things that items that get used up, one thing doesn't get used up. Let's make sure here it's, uh, we're still recording. Okay. Um, if I buy, uh, let's say we're buying toner, we're buying supplies, paper clips, all those things are getting used. It's an expense. Um, let's assume, let's assume for right now it's an expense. A rent is definitely an expense. The money's gone. Why did you pay the money to live in your facility? I mentioned in passing before, if you give security money two months, so five, twice $500, $1,000, you didn't expense that money. That money is an asset. It's like an escrow account. It's when you leave the apartment on time at the end of your lease and there's no damages, you get those money back. So you can't realistically say, I, my business made $1,000 less because I paid security. You, it's like another type of bank. You have a bank which you have access to. You have a bank which is an escrow by a lawyer or escrow by someone who will get back. So that's another type of asset that you will have, just like you have receivables, you have undeposited funds, you have assets of security. Now, when you have furniture, eventually it will get used up over time, get worn out, but it can be many, many years. And it's not appropriate say, you know what, if I made $10,000, I'm gonna have zero income this year because I'm gonna go buy fancy $10,000 uh, sofa couch and, and, uh, and a new computer for my office and there's no, there's no money, there's no taxes. Our IRS doesn't let that happen. But at the end of the day, one day the computer is not gonna work anymore. I'm gonna have to get a new computer and then that computer has no value. Am I going to just say five years from now when the computer is not, not worth anything, it's an expense? And the same thing with the furniture, little by little gets worn out. So there are different acceptable tables by the IRS, how we call it depreciation. Depreciation is recognizing the cumulative expense of a fixed asset. Okay, so if you buy a computer, an expected life is worth so it'd be, let's say, five years. And the computer cost me $1,200, or, or copy me, cost $1,200. We'll assume that every year I'm eating up $240 of that copy machine. So five times 240 is 1,200. So initially, when we buy the computer copy machine, on day one, it's worth $1,200. At the end of the year, it's worth $240 less because it has a five-year expectancy. So now it's only worth $960. So this is where I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to even use, uh, uh, what's it called? I wouldn't be able to use a register of the bank. We're going to put it in the bank. Well, theoretically you could, but I'm going to show you the, there's a way to do it, but I'll show you actually in the, in the journal entry. Let's see right now in our assets. We have in a balance sheet, we have two assets, we have several assets in furniture. 2079, we have, let's go back to the beginning of the year, or let's say month is enough for us. We bought from Office Depot a cotton machine for 1200, we bought a, an Amazon computer for 500 on sale, and we have a desk. Let's start with the, with the cotton machine 1200, that's the example I gave. We're taking a five year depreciation, and then I'll tell you a piece of news after it. So if I made a general journal entry, and you'll see, I'm not gonna have to do this. QuickBooks knows about it by itself. This is called an adjusting entry because we're, ju- we're doing this at the end of the year. Let's assume it's adjusting entry. And we do R, let's assume we're holding the end of the year, 12, 31, 2020. Here's the time to take a cheshbon. The first general entry will be for putting in, let's see, I'll put a wrong date. It's okay. Um, so this today, our we're end of the year tab. I'm going to put in D and depreciation expense. Even though I'm a service business and I am not having inventory, but 
the accounting profession and QuickBooks obviously knows that every company has depreciation. If I bought a car for the business, everyone knows you drive it off the car parking lot, it goes down a third of its value almost just by taking it out of the dealer's shop. But, not, but you cannot do that on day one and say I bought a $30,000 car on 1220, five, you know, five years, four, five days, 40 years over, let me take off a $10,000 expense depreciation of, car, depreciation of car. That wouldn't fly. But right now we bought this in May, which is already more than half a year. I'm only taking off $240, okay? My debit is an expense, expense on the debit side. And on the credit side, what's happening? What's really happening is I'm crediting the asset. That means an asset is worth more on the debit side and it's worth less on the credit side, right? In the bank, we put $100 in with debit bank. We take out $100, we credit the bank. So if I type an A, it's called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation. This is also over time because you know why? The, even though the value of the, of the copy machine went down, the physical copy machine is still here. So I'm not going to depreciate copy machine itself. I don't have a copy machine here. I just have accumulated depreciation and I'll show you how that changes on the balance sheet. I'm going to put again, in this case, it didn't give me automatically because it doesn't assume maybe I did something, let's say 240. 240, that balances on the bottom, right? The debits have to equal the credits. If I would put only 200, you know what's gonna happen? Let's say 200, I press tab, automatically, they're gonna throw me a $40 on the side because they know it has to match. Debits have to equal credits. Because in one way or another, that's, there's a, this is the dual counting system. You can't have a depreciation expense and only $200 accumulated depreciation. So I accumulated depreciation $240. And it's more than 30 days in the future, right? I said 90 days in the past, 30 days in the future. I want to make the change, yes. And they, they're telling me they have with tracking fixed assets, but we'll leave that for now. And I pressed OK. Now, report needs to be refreshed because we just did something that affects our balance sheet, which is actually both. We did an expense, that expense affects our PL. Right now, if you remember, our P&L was negative 791. We just added an expense of 240. So we're gonna go over the thousand dollar mark, it should be 1031 if it's stand corrected, so that we have expense on the, net, on the asset side, on the so expense on the P&L. But the other side, the cumulative depreciation affects the balance sheet. Now we have $240 less in assets. Let's see how this played out. Okay, this is the furniture and equipment. That doesn't change. So let's go close this. Uh, we modify, we don't save reports. If you look here on our assets, not as of today, because nothing happened as of today, right? We're gonna put in this fiscal year. This fiscal year means 1231. You will see here shows up, accumulated depreciation negative 240, furniture still has a value of 2079 with the net total fixed asset of 1839. So everything is accounted for. We have all our furniture still there. The physical items are still there. The cop machine is still here. The computer is still here. But I have now a counter, it's called a contra account in the accounting terminology, but I have accumulated depreciation, which is to show, to recognize that the company is worth less. It's not fair if I sell my company and I say, oh, we have assets worth 2,079. It's not true. You have assets worth 1839. You have assets purchased at 2,079. You have depreciation at, against it, accumulated 240. Okay, so that again, reduced our equity back to negative 211. Originally we had positive 229, but we, we had a positive 29, but by making a negative of 240, somehow it pulls out our equity to 211. Okay, now let's look back at the PL to understand what happened. All of a sudden, we have 1031, correct. 
because we added a new thing called appreciation expense. Now, we don't have to add this chart of account. This, again, that's why we set up the company with the standard accounts. The expense only shows us what actually exists. If this year was zero on something, it wouldn't even show up on the line. The only time something would show up on the line is, for example, if I want to compare the report to last year, I want to see how did our business do from this year to last year. You have the difference, $70. Last year we made $70. I think this is a, a new type of report you're seeing we customized. And after this, you could check it out on your own. Last year we made $70 of income. We have sales income of 1710. Right? So total income of all time is 1780 that I could show. I would go to all at seventeen eighty, but if I go back to my fiscal year, and I was running a comparative report, and I could choose the one of the percentage or the dollar change. This year we earned the extra sixty forty because our business opened up the last day of the year. No, no chiddush. Now it has to show everything as zero because we forced to show comparison to last year. This year I have 250, last year was zero. This year we have 328, last year was zero. But if I wasn't showing comparative, then, all, then I would only show what I had. And because we added extra 240 on top of this negative 721 from last time, we have now 1031. So that is the first concept of depreci depreciation expense, where over time we're recognizing the, the, the lesser value of assets purchased. Same way it happens with copy machine, it could happen to computer. Same way it happens to these portable assets, right? These, this is, we call it fixed assets, but it's not really fixed. Fixed assets will be a built-in machine. You have like a printing house that has a real machine built into it that's not movable. You have uh, cars, you cannot lift them. You have a building, a building is a real, is a, could be is a real fixed asset that doesn't move. Land is a fixed asset. Now, land never depreciates. Land will always exist. Even if the building falls down, crumbles, it's worth nothing. The land is still there. The land has a value. The only time land changes in value is when it moves from one person to another, you record the purchase price of the land by the new person. If it was more, so then land is more. If it's less, land is less, but it has nothing to do with our company. If we bought a building on a property, for a million dollars, we have to pick an allocation. How much you're paying for land, how much you're paying for the building itself. Then we could depreciate the building, but will not depreciate the land. And these are fixed assets. And as I said, in fixed assets, we, we do not depreciate the asset itself. We put a contra. The assets stay here at 2079 with a contra of 240. Now you can ask, what happens if the computer is, is, you know, is worthless, it's worth nothing, we've got a new computer and now I'm throwing it in the garbage to recycle. So then we will eliminate both because we physically don't have a computer. So we'll take away the computer and we will also take away the accumulated depreciation. You can't have a negative asset that's not here, right? Computer depre accumulated depreciation is an amount to offset furniture only till zero can't go more so furniture equipment will one day be zero and you, you'll have actually won't be you have 2079 furniture and equipment you'll have negative 2079 accumulated depreciation you'll have a zero in your fixed assets because there's nothing left that's why you still own it and there's a point of showing it on your company but when you throw it out you'll make a new journal and a new journal entry let's say in 2022, and you'll say, now you'll do the reverse. Since you have furniture and equipment, you'll, which was a debit, you'll credit furniture equipment for 2079, you will debit accumulated depreciation for 2079, and then it will be zero, and then it will disappear from your company's books. That's how it works with fixed assets. Then there's a thing called intangible assets, for which we have what's called amortization. Amortization is, let's say you buy a mortgage, or you actually, let's say more correctly, you're refinancing a mortgage. Because when you go and buy a building and you 
have to take a mortgage and there's closing costs, the first time that's part of your purchase. I bought a building for a million dollars. I put down a hundred thousand. I borrowed 900. So, right. So I, with my hundred and 900, but I borrowed, I have a million dollars for the building, but then there's $25,000 closing costs. That is my cost of the building. So my building cost me building a million dollars. But in addition to that, my cost to get the building is $25,000. So that I would still roll all into the building. But then there's loan costs which for a refi. The only reason I have it is for refinancing the mortgages. No, no, the building, nothing changed. I'm just, I, I got a hard loan for 12% just to get in because I want to make a closing quickly. And then I go and refinance for 3% or 4%. So now I have loan costs of, uh, of another $12,000, but it's worth it because in one year I make the money back. So this is intangible. You cannot touch it. It's an asset of loan. You cannot point to it, but it's on the books of the company. It wasn't an expense. You cannot do that refi expense at the expense. So now there's no taxes. So then you divide that over 15 years. That's a standard 15 years over 180 months. And every year you'll take off a section, a, a portion of that. So we'll, just to simplify, if I had $15,000 of refinance costs, I would take off $1,000 every year, but I wouldn't be debit, debiting, uh, I, would, I would debit amortization expense, just like I do with depreciation expense. I would debit amortization. It's the, in that case, then it would be $1,000 expense. But the credit, which means to take away the asset, right? Just like I have the furniture and equipment, I want to have another asset called uh, loan costs, loan origination costs. I would not make a contra accumulated loan, accumulated uh, amortization. There, I would do it against the loan cost itself. So what would show up wouldn't be 2,079 with a negative. It will be only 14,000 because it got wiped out. Again, it will be the thousand dollar expense. What I would see in this year will be a negative 1,000 against the 15, bring it to 14. I'm not doing that entry right now because I don't have a, a loan yet. We, we could do that theoretically, but I'm introducing the concept. Now, this is all for bookkeeping purposes where it's appropriate to do things correctly. You know, you accumulate depreciation against the furniture and you, and you only recognize piece by piece. And then I'm gonna go over to a Q&A when I finish. Now, uh, with, with the tax law, the ticket of 2017, which Trump put into for companies, this is called bonus depreciation, which for certain items, you can take a bonus. They wanted to kickstart the economy, right? A lot of times a company invests, let's say $200,000 into something, and it's not an expense. So they don't, so they have to say buy a new printing machine for $200,000. But since it's not an expense, they have, that, they have income, they pay taxes. They don't have money to pay taxes. So they, they can't run a business if they don't have money for taxes because they just bought an asset, right? They, they borrowed money from someone, they bought a, a machine, they made money, but there's, no, but there's no cash because they have an asset. So how are they going to pay the taxes? So to kickstart the economy and people should invest, they let them take a, an expense at it. So they won't have to pay taxes. So in this case, most likely the total, we would be able to take the whole 2079 as an expense in the first year. I'm, but I'm, I'm, this is all necessary because this is a small item. If I bought a building for a million dollars, no, you cannot go bonus appreciation a million dollars and wipe out my million dollars. There is a schedule for the IRS. If it's commercial property, it gets depreciated over 39 years or so. If it's a building, it could be over 20, uh, which has residential, it's 27 and a half years. So yeah, you could get a nice $30,000 expense every year on your building or even more, but you have to know how you do it. If it's an expensive item, if it's a fixed asset, you will be depreciating over a long period, let's say uh, an accumulated depreciation. If it's an item like a computer or like a cell phone, then what you will do is you will be, um, you could really theoretically expense, um, 
not take a portion, but take the full amount in that year. That is it for the Hakadam of depreciation and amortization. And that completes the cycle of things that happen in a service business. And I will go with a Q&A on this. Hello, okay. Um, Mindy925 Mindy, uh, has asked me how to get to this page. Which page is this? Please tell me. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, let me see a second. Let's see if I can use it. Again, I'll show how do I add depreciation to Ford in general journal? You go to uh, company, make general journal entries, company general journal entries. And I'm doing this a second time so everyone could then today have the same books as I have. We go to general journal and I went to D, which is depreciation expense. I entered 240. I'm not going to save this because I already did it once. And again, QuickBooks automatically gives me the 240 and knows that's the debit. The, the credit is going to equal that. I do AC. I'm sorry, it's accumulated depreciation. And you save. In case QuickBooks prompts you to let you know about their method of taking care of fixed assets, for now, just click OK and go further. Is it always five years? No, there are, diff there are different items on uh, this furniture, this one has been this office. But again, like I said, many items up to 15 years are expensable now based on the new tax law for these seven years till 2025, unless Congress changes it and makes it permanent. But for these years, you can hop it in, you can invest in your business and take an expense. I think with cars, there's an exception. There's a limit how much you can take in vehicles in the first year. Because yeah, it's very easy, everyone wants a new car and they'll take a forty thousand dollar expense, there's the ten thousand dollar limit or so. But uh, many items, office furniture, yes, you can go buy that five thousand dollar executive desk because the reason you you are assuming it's a necessary expense, you want people to walk into an office, you are professional, you're not having a, only a folding table like I'm sitting right now. Because who sees my table? You only see my face. But you come to an office, you want to see a nice mahogany desk, oak, cherry, whatever color it is, you can have nice armchairs. So that expense of office furniture is necessary for people. You can, that's gonna, it's gonna weigh, just like you advertise and you're making an impression on people, it's gonna generate income. It's a necessary and it's ordinary. No, don't buy a $30,000 desk. They had this, um, I think it was Ben Carson or whoever it was from the HPD, a government program and they spent on a kitchen set. I don't know why he had a kitchen in the government office and they spent tens of thousands of dollars and a nice sofa, that was definitely inappropriate. But, but uh, in an office to spend, you know, again, I'm, I'm not expert on what the value of furniture is, but I would say if you spent uh, $12,000 on, on an engraved, hand, hand engraved uh, bookcase, that could be for your personal library, that uh, if, you're, if you're lavish and, and it matches the decor of your house, and with trimmings, I wouldn't think that's what you should be doing in your office. But again, if you're a law firm and it's in the conference room and you're bringing in clients, you know, there's no, you know, every case is different, you know, that, but this is beyond the scope of this course. Um, and so life. And the same thing would be leasehold improvements. If you have a rent lease, so you, you take a lease for, for a 10 year lease, and you take a 10 year lease because if you're going to invest $100,000 in renovating your store, you don't want them to send you out after two years and then you don't have return on your money. So you take a 10 year lease, you're, you're assuming $10,000 a year is, is uh, for your income. That means uh, I'm running a business. I'm allocating a $10,000 expense every year to cover my investment in leasehold. But at a tax perspective, you can go ahead and expense that whole $100,000, even if you didn't have $100,000 in income. 
you would have a loss, no problem. That loss you carry over to next year. You don't lose benefit. Just in case by mistake, he made money next year, he could use the loss from last year. That's another thing which they did in the tax law, that losses are carried over for companies indefinitely. There used to be expiration of 20 years. Anyway, it's a wise to do time of purchase in 1231. Like I said, you enter the asset. At this point, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, you bought something, it's not an expense. But then at the end of the year, you'll do the adjustments. Now, again, when I said office supplies, there is really two ways to do it. Some people, what they do is they do right away an expense on the office supplies. I bought five years of paper for $120. So I expensed. At the end of the year, I still have four of those cases left. So I can't say I had a whole expense. I still have in the stock $90 worth or whatever it is. So then you go back and you undo an expense for $90 and you have an asset for next year, $40. On the flip side, some people do an asset right away. I have an asset. I bought the, it was on sale and it was a closeout. It was a mistake, but uh, they can't change the price change. So I bought uh, $1,000 worth of, of uh, hot cups for, uh, for 100 employees. I'm going to keep that expense. I, I can keep it as an asset. At the end of the year, there's only $800 worth left, and they make the expense then. But the debits and entries, that's the same idea. If you originally made it an asset, now you got to, at the end of the year, make an expense. If you originally made an expense, you got to recognize the asset. And those are adjustments you make at your end. There are other adjustments that you make for salaries. So hopefully next time on Monday, we'll touch a little bit on the idea of salaries. And what did I say was we're going to do next week? Remind me, I said two things we do for next week. That's a depreciation. And the, we're going to, if you have any questions, stick around. We have a half hour of, of uh, Q&A. If the depreciation doesn't show on your asset, again, make sure you report it's showing the whole fiscal year. Okay, that is... So the, the only two new things I did today and conception, besides explaining things, reviewing, is we act, actually three things. We actually made a deposit of $145 for, who was this? Uh, for Glick and Holtz Clapper, we deposited $145. What we did new is we made depreciation expense of the 240 and we added 250 to cover the bank. Those were the new entries. Everything else was just covering reports. Okay, so I think that takes care of that. How do you calculate depreciation? That is a question for your accountant. You just call up and then you'll have to put it to the books. Usually you have already a standard the company knows. From last year, the boss will tell you this we're doing. He might just tell you expense it right away. He'll tell you, he might tell you that. But I'm teaching you, you know, the full cycle. How do we calculate depreciation? That's that. How do you deposit? If you go, again, if you go to make the banking, make deposits. Anything that was not deposited yet will sh should sh show up. If I see the screen, it means that I have nothing to go. And for the second, you can always double check, do it a second time. Maybe you, you cancel the transaction in the middle. So go again to make deposits. I deposited it, so I have nothing left. Okay, so now we're about the 940 questions. I think we're pretty current with the questions. Um, I can't find now. I'm not sure. Okay. We answer this. Um, how do I refresh depreciation automatic when I enter something and I have an open report of balance sheet or Profit and loss open, it's going to ask me, you know, profit, profit and loss will ask me to refresh. Again, now we have here the 240 depreciation expense. Now you could write down that not the net income is negative 721. Again, this year was really 791. This year, net income was originally 791, it was only 721 because we counted last year's. If I count now the depreciation, this is the new net income, negative 1031. Again, this is the cruel basis. 
So next time we're going to show you a few things in cash basis. We'll show you a little bit how to work a little payroll because payroll also works in a service business. Of course, everyone's got paid and we'll leave the inventory for Wednesday. If anyone remembers what else I said I was going to do next week, remind me. Thank you very much. Um, the date of depreciation, I use the end of year. I put an R, it's end of current year. Make sure it's this year. So if you enter the depreciation spice twice, you'll go to journal entries, go comp plus company, um, make general journal entries, and make an arrow, and it'll t okay, no, I'm not doing that. No, I don't want to do it. Okay, it's a clear source. You make an arrow, and you're gonna have only one entry here. If you have two, you'll delete one of them. So we only have one journal entry so far, depreciation expense. Okay, that the answer. Anonymous doesn't say, okay, give me a minute. I'm gonna turn on the question. Okay, whoever needs questions, let me know. I'm gonna start with, I hope there's only one anonymous. Otherwise you can't call unanonymous because I can't help multiple, I don't know how, who, who he is. Unless you will uh, raise your hand. Okay, let's see, Q and A. Q and A, I have to go to participants, okay. So we're starting here with Farka. Uh, uh, live talk. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Um, so from the last class, I apparently made um, two entries for Holtz Clapper and Fivish. Today I paid, I, I paid for both of them. What do you mean um, you paid? But, what do you mean you paid for them? They, they, they... I made deposits. I right. made deposits. So you, have, both... so you have to delete a deposit before you delete a payment. You can't delete a payment because it's already in the bank. Okay, I'm, I'm not, I don't understand what that means. I'm sorry. Because um, when I go back to make a uh, deposit, both of them um, show up again. I have receipts for a $20 bill and a receipt for 75 How do I delete those two receipts? Uh, okay, so don't deposit a second. So you, did, you only deposited once. You only you only made the you ended the sales receipts twice. Right. right. So how do I deposit? Okay. How do I so so go out of deposits, go to the customer. So you go, so to, you go back to customer, like I'm showing you. You see, you see I'm showing you customer? Yeah. Customer center, you go to um five ish. And if you have two sales receipts, you double click on you'll double click on any one of them. No, it um, only shows me one for some reason. Maybe one of them you did, you entered with a name or with add a name. Right. So then what you'll do is you go to customer, enter sales receipts, enter sales receipts, and you take the arrows to, to, to flip through the receipts to see who's here. Uh huh. And then? Clear. And see if you, if you have one that's blank on the top, you have a name. So assign your name so you can delete it because otherwise it doesn't know where to pull it from. Right now we have two sales receipts. We have number one is uh, Holtz Clapper, which was this year. We have five-ish from last year. If you have more receipts, right from this window, you can go edit and void sales receipts or delete sales receipts. But make sure you're only deleting not one and two or not. If it's the one you deposited, it's not gonna let you do that. But that that's what you'll do. You'll, you can go to, go around. You don't, you don't have to create a name and then Delete it, just look for the extra one over here and delete it. Um, okay, I'm not finding anything because um, a window keeps coming up. It says, this transaction is more than 30 days in the future, but I'm not okay, doing it. Good. Well, the other thing is, look on the bank. When you deposited 70 and 45 the first time, was that actually taking the undeposited funds where you just put an extra $70 and $40? That's not an option. You have to double click at the, at the deposits and see where it's coming from. If you would go to uh, banking, we're gonna get the, we had to see Mr. Katzman and the Weinbergers next, we'll get to you. Um, and the use register, okay, so we're in the, see, if I say, here's an example. If I want to register, I'll bring it a, a five-ish register. That's why not always works. You have to be not on the customer name. So let me go to bank, go control R, 
Go to your seventy dollar deposit, which is is your deposit as of last year. When is your seventy dollar deposit? Double click on it. See where it's coming from. By me, it shows it's coming from five ish. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what it's showing for me too. So, so you got it. So you made a deposit from five ish. If you click in seventy five, it's showing that it came from Hulse Clapper. Um, I have to go back. Um, so if your if your current deposits are showing they came from the receipts, from these people pay the receipts. Yes. Yes. And you and you then you have duplicate receipts. You have to find it under the sales receipts. You have to go to again enter sales receipts. Um, clear out any name that's here. Go go revert or clear whatever is in the bottom right corner here. I don't know if you see. I don't know if you actually see it. I have to maybe minimize it a little bit. Um, right. On the bottom right corner, there's save and close. How do I turn off the warning that says that it's um 30 days in advance? How do I turn it off? Well, we're, we're gonna tell you that next class. Okay, because so it's, it's not. To, it's okay. not. It's not just press okay. They're only asking to make sure you want to do it. So don't say no. Say you're doing okay. So you press okay. But uh, why are you doing okay? Okay means that you're making a receipt. You, know, you don't want to do a receipt. That's why I said do re the bottom right corner on your screen is a revert button, which basically just uh, undoes any receipts. Okay, I'll look, I'll look through them. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, look through them. We're gonna move on. I'm gonna give, I could say, a couple minutes each person. So do a right click, left click, and see if you have, uh, if okay. you more, make sure you have, hopefully you have more than one invoice, and one of them shows up as blank. One second, when you made, when you didn't make deposits that showed also the names of Glick and Hulse Clapper again, or just showed that money amounts? Yeah, it showed the money, no, no names. No names. So that's because you received payments against an invoice that had no name. Because if you received the payments and it wasn't had a name, it would, it would tell you that. It would show up the name. So that's your answer. You created the invoice without names. I did it myself last time I was taken, I corrected it, so. That's what, you have to, that's what you have to find. Anyway, the end of the day, if you get the hang of it, it's not, uh, we're gonna create a new company either Wednesday or after Shua's uh, for, with, for the inventory. But the idea is that you, you see how everything works. So if you made two extra sales and you have extra money, it ties out, just make the deposit and et cetera. Okay, okay thank no problem. Let's move to the next one online. Um, we have it, Mr. Katzman. If you want to talk. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, my question is, I have instead, instead of um, members' equity, I have $70 in retained earnings. Okay, so that's because you set up as a corporation, not as a LLC, but same with there. It, it shows you what was last year's money coming into this year. The, right. the, the, the new equity is made up of last year, which will be retained. That's if you retained it. That's why company, company, see companies work as dividends. It makes money and it keeps it in the company and it's retained unless it issues a dividend. That's when you pay second taxation. You pay tax on the income, you pay, the people pay on dividends. In the LLC, it flows through. It's your equity, it's your equity from last year. Is there a way to fix that? Or no, it you, you don't need to. Uh, we're just teaching. We're just teaching a right. class. Okay, because also, I, instead of regular member equity, it tells me member one equity when we answer the two fifty. Yeah, so so you did you did a multi member S corp probably, or or maybe maybe you did a multi member LLC. Um, where, oh, maybe. So, I said so. That's how by default it gives you two. But it doesn't matter at all for the class. For this class, it doesn't make a difference. I, okay. I, you know, it's like you come to say, "I will get the same printer at home," but you find the pasuk and you find that, you know. So, okay, okay, all right. So that's for you. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. All right, Mr. Weinberger. Hi. How are you? Um, can I add uh, depreciation to automatically deduct over five years, like to two forty, or do I have to manually add that every year? You can do it every year because you don't know what's going to happen next year. I Maybe know that if I buy a laptop, let's say my cheshman is it's going to last five yeah, years. Yeah, but what happens with laptop breaks? Because then it's, it's not very efficient. Basically, if you have thousands of products, you have you would automatically going to end up losing. Okay, again, things. this is not this is not inventory. It's not products you're selling. This is in the company. But a company can have many many different uh, expenses that. 
right I depreciate over you know what i mean I don't, you're automatically going to lose so you you'll, you'll make you'll make, you'll, you you'll, you'll, make, you'll make one general amount if you if you if you bring buying a batch of 10 computers uh, at 500 each is five thousand dollars then the you'll make one uh, if you five years take a hundred dollars per computer you put a thousand dollars for depreciation you have to depreciate when, by the way, if you notice, I didn't depreciate the, in, in, in QuickBooks, I didn't depreciate. Uh, the furniture, I see. The, right. You just did I, 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 just did, I did general. I did depreciation expense against the thing. You don't have to have records for what it was depreciated for? If, uh, you, you do. But uh, when the, the, the records are, again, if you don't accounting, accounting usually has software where they, they add your assets to, to the program and the, the, the program automatically calculates the depreciation. It already knows to do the bonus depreciation, it assumes it's a benefit. Sometimes you might elect not to depreciation bonus because you want to. You don't want to show a loss. You have so many. Prior, you, you want to go to the bank. You want to show you have more assets in the company. Depreciation. There, there, there are some different methods of a depreciation. One mm-hmm. method is making you know it's called straight line. Is you take taking five years, divide over five years. You might say that depreciates the most in the first year, and the later on appreciates a little bit. There's, um, if you get it the last month, maybe you're only taking a little bit for the first month and the next year will take more. You, so you choose a method. Right, of so basically it will get confusing year three. I'm, have, I'm going back to laptops from five years ago and a car from okay. two years ago. And right, so, there's, it's so, hard the software, to, the, so that's why QuickBooks actually offered to keep track of successes. So you could investigate, again, this, this is beyond, I don't, it's not something which we could cover in, in this course. At least, you know, and then it's, that'll be an advanced course, how to calculate the different company. I'm teaching concepts, I'm teaching how to make the entries. To keep track of five years running inventory, you know, okay, you have, now we're five years old on, on a copy machine, four years old on this, two years on that. So QuickBooks, you, know, you if you enter the day, you receive the assets, and, and QuickBooks will calculate uh, different uh, time periods and different depreciations. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's go for see if people didn't ask it. Did the, this is a righteous. If you want to talk. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm not sure why my numbers are still, I mean, I, my net income now is still 791, negative Neg- 7. Negative 71, it's because you didn't add the appreciation expense. I did, I thought, I'd, could you just redirect me again with that? Okay, then? oh, maybe you did, but, right. you, but you didn't show up for the year, so. Well, you go to P and L. What is your period of the report? You see on the top over here, you have period report. Do you have this fiscal year, or is it just this month? If it's, it's this, this fiscal month, year, this fiscal year, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> what? It's this fiscal year, but it doesn't look like yours. Are you on cash or accrual? Well, actually, it wouldn't be seven ninety-one. Accrual. You don't have to be accrual because otherwise, it wouldn't be seven ninety-one either. Right. Um, I, is it? Would it be that? that one just, second. So look, look again. On your PL, do you see a line called depreciating expense? Do you see no. depreciating expense? You don't. I looked for it, but I thought I'm pretty sure like made that obnoxious. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe didn't save it. Maybe, maybe it's still in the middle of the entry. Go to window. Could you do you see a drop down in make general general entries? Tra- transactions that if you yeah. if you see, if you see make general general entries, see are you in the middle of a transaction? In this case, I'm in the middle of a transaction because I'm still in one. In my case, I already I don't have to save it because I already I can exit out. So wait, so which drop down is that at? Well, you go to you go to company, make right, general right. entries. Perfect. So let me just go check it. And see if are you still maybe you never actually saved it. You just prepared it. No, it looks like I did because it's giving me I'm here now and it's giving me an entry number two. Go back, make a left. Okay, so we'll just go back, make a left. What was your first entry? 240, 240. Yeah, what, what is it? Okay, what is the date of your of your of your 1231. Which year? Oh, 2021. All right. <laughs> okay, so that's the end. You have next year. Okay, go ahead and take care of that one. And uh, should we take your thing? Thank you. Let's see. Um, anyone else? Okay, we'll, go, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get seconds now. Let's get Avrami. Avrami has a question. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. Yeah. I buy um, transaction detail by account, whereby comb comes up. I mean, like four, three times. Which transaction? Where are you? Where are you going? By um, I went to report. Yeah, you did a detailed report. Yes, it's by um, sales income. 
Okay, um, we didn't we didn't that report yet. So right now I'm I'm going to answer on what we discussed in the class. How to analyze other things. We'll, we'll we'll learn reports. We'll get more involved in reports after um, after Schwartz, after getting inventory. I want to get first to the general idea how to make reports. We make a, a profit loss and a balance sheet. We're going to learn inventory. I want to do payroll, and then we could get we could fine tune how to do reports because you see. You can see how many reports you can do. There's unlimited reports, and then you go into reports and you customize and you can't. It doesn't add up to the same as yours. Mine's again, again, do the report that I made and, and then we'll work from there. Take a company standard, PL. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. So, okay, so company, they told me sales. So, company. So I know, it's company, no, the first one. Okay, company profit and loss. Mm -hmm. So, that's where I am. What, which period are they taking? If you go into, um, you click into sales income, into the Sales like one second. Before clicking again, what do you have in, in on your on your report time and what do you have for your sale number? It's 50120. Again, wh what is your period? It's the us month. Okay. Go this fiscal year, number one. Are you in cash or accrual? Accrual. This is skill accrual and your sales only shows five hundred hours. No, well, now it says 1710. Good, that's, that's, that's correct. That's correct. And that's how do I look after duplicates? Well, you don't have duplicates because I have 1710, you have 1710. So why are the duplicates? Mm. I double click on it. And you have, this is what you have. If I double click on it, you can have uh, all your sales. What's your net income? And then it comes negative 1031. What do you have? Um, 1910. So go down your list. What are you missing? You're missing 200, 1910. You probably put your assets as, do you have a furniture expense? So, um, what do you uh, have? You have advertising, go through your expenses. You have advertising? Yes. 250, you have depreciation? I'm 240. Yeah, what do you else you have? Equipment 500, furniture 379. Okay, the, the, so you gotta go into that and reclassify it as an asset. You made the, how you, if you expense the asset, how can you go and take depreciation top of that? Mm -hmm. you, you, you're double dipping. You, you expensed it and then you expense it again. So equipment and furniture is one? Uh, furniture equipment is really the same. I just, I, in my steps, I wrote furniture and equipment, but they- I they created a new account. I created a new account. I, I know you did that. So but you, all you do is go so double click on your furniture and mm -hmm. go into those each item and it'll be a drop down menu. Just go back and choose furniture and equipment and see if that should help you. I'll move on to the next question, but while you do that, if it, if it doesn't work, you let me know. It's furniture and equipment. You see furniture and equipment and the assets? Yes. Good, so we classify both of those two things and let me know if you get the 1031. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, we're back to Mr. Weinberger. And uh, after Mr. Weinberger, we'll go to uh, Ms. Ratner. Is Mr. Weinberger here? Hello? Okay, we'll go over to Mr. Ratner here. If you, hello? Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay. So um, I need an answer to that question that I emailed you before um, about something I did wrong with the chase, with the office rental. Just give me one second. Um, Go back to the screen share again. Okay, what was the short office rental? I have it in, um, it's in accounts payable and in Chase. What? Uh, transaction. Okay, let's go balance sheet. What, what do you have? Um, okay, let me go back to the accounts payable is supposed to be 704. What do you have? Accounts table is 
No, in the PNL. Okay, you told me the accounts payable, so not good. Uh, PNL, PNL rent expense is fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, and when I okay. wait, go to Control Y. Control Y. Actually, no, you have, you have to double click on it. So you have to go into it first. So double click on double click on that. What on this on the rental? On, on the fifteen hundred dollars. Right. Okay. Yeah, and highlight that. In detail and by account, it says. If I do control Y, it's going to show that I had a rent expense of 200 and when it originally becomes payable. Is right. that how it happened by you? So I have it twice. By accounts payable, it says 1515. And then it says office rentals chase zero and then balance 15. So you, I have you, a wait, different wait. balance on what did I write on? You have a three. You have a three thousand dollar rent expense. No, I have so, fifteen hundred. Okay. That came up wrong, according according to yours. Maybe it was maybe it was the balance sheet. I think I got confused. Maybe it's on the balance sheet. Let Expenses check. come from the PNL. And so the numbers were right. I think when you double click like I did on the rent yeah. expense of fifteen hundred on the PNL, right, and then. You saw fifteen hundred dollars. There's rent expense bill and then a check, another line a check. And the check says to Chase, but it says zero. But it says um, the check doesn't go to Chase. It doesn't be from Chase. That's why, that's why I'm doing. That, that's why I'm going for deficit credits because I can't glance at your computer or whatever. You're not sharing. My, you can right. share me your screen, but I can't walk you through it. That's why, if I go this way, I could see the debit is expense and you made it payable. Then afterwards, we don't take the expense again. What we do is we debit the payable and we credit Chase. So we have to see what happened. Okay. And you, now you didn't make the debit. What happens, you just wrote a check out, you, paid, you went to vendors, pay bills, you paid office rentals, $1,500 from Chase. And behind the scenes, what QuickBook is doing is they're crediting the Chase and the, and the debiting the payable. So I'm trying to see what, how you would do differently. No, there was something that you had and mine was totally off on account of, it was a $1,500 mistake. Oh, okay, 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 let's just do one thing quickly. Let's look at the profit and loss. Does your P&L show negative 1081 or a different number? 1031. 1031, yeah, I have 1031. Good, so your p and is right. right. Let's go back to the balance sheet. Okay. Is your balance sheet um, showing payables of 704 and showing credit cards of 879 old yes. and Shimon 1200. Yes. What's the total liability in equity? It's 2572. Oh. So, so, so I have that also. So maybe sometime during the thing you followed when I was doing this fiscal year, or you changed the dates and things fell into place because right now there's nothing yep. to argue about. Matching. Was, but before yeah. the class, it wasn't. So I don't know. <laughs> okay, so maybe maybe as we review, then we, I, I maybe someone sent me. You sent me. A, I think you showed me. All, you, you I don't know if you saw someone sent me an email with two pictures side by side. I saw right away the period of the period of the report was a different period, so it doesn't come the same. Uh -huh. well, everything makes a difference. Okay. okay. So now on the statement where you said that if a name doesn't show up by deposit, that means that. Um, that it wasn't written into the customer uh, but as, as, as a sales receipt or in the bank register? In the bank register, it's coming up blank. Just says okay. the Okay, so the, not everyone always records where they got the money from. Money uh -huh. came, money went to the bank. I, I just put it in just to, because, uh, just to show how you could, you know. Uh, add it directly? Yeah, so let's say in the register, people think that, uh, Let's say I'm in the bank, right? So the number, the line here, you think who you were to check to. So you're right. writing a check and payment. But really, because if it's blank, just payee, right? Mm -hmm. By default, they think you're writing out checks. So the payee is a check, so you blank, but you could have, you could write a name of a deposit and put it in the deposit. You could do that. Right. And then and that's, and that's a, a backwards way. Now, if you would want to go now and see, uh, make a sales, who's your customers, one way is by the, the customers and sales receipts and you entered customers and you made the deposits, you will show up with people. In this case here by the 70, you're not showing the people. Right. It's blank. Because the money didn't come directly for the person or into the bank. See, the bank knows what goes from it. The money's in the bank. You write a check, it goes directly to the person, there's a name. Right. right? But so, it's 
I have my own bank register. Right. My own one, check one, one second, let me just finish this one thing. Yeah. The money going out of the bank goes directly to the person, there's a name. Money going into the bank didn't come directly to the bank from the person. It right. went through an account called undeposited. Right. You receive the money undeposit. So undeposit doesn't get a name. But you could put a name if you want to. Uh -huh. Okay. But now, if you yeah, well, remember who who they got that from and to check it. What's if that check? Oh, okay. Okay. So so that's what I said. That's why I entered, I entered Ruvain as the person. Right. And okay. if if I did it this way, I could do it in, through banking deposit. I go to banking, make deposits, mm -hmm. and I will just receive from. So in this case, I'm not even bothering to make a sales receipt. That's another thing you could do. I could go and now receive from Glick, Fiveish, from account sales. Because I made a sale, and I put in uh, the amount, hundred dollars, right? Now I did not do enter sale receipts. I didn't do bank. I just went, but I'm really am making the sales receipts. If I would go, I'm going to delete. But if I go save and close, right? Why? Because this is twelve thirty one. Let's say for argument's sake, you know. But let's say right now, if I go to my bank, it's going to show me a hundred dollars coming from sales. I didn't put the person. I could force it. I could I could go back and, and manually put it. Yeah. By default, it, do, it doesn't carry the name by default. Uh -huh. If I go to um, customers, um, customer center, right? So under click, I still only have one sales receipt. I don't have two because I, I got it to the bank in a different way. But now my income went down from negative 1031 to negative 931 because I got the $100. So QuickBook only cares what's the bottom line. You got the 100 bucks, it's in the bank, it's, you reduce, you change it up to negative 931. And it keeps it in the bank, as you see in the register, I put it in the 100. But it's not gonna create a sales receipt because you didn't do sales receipt, you just went straight to the deposit. So again, you have three ways of getting income. You're making an invoice, and accrual sees it right away, but not cash. You can make a sales receipt, and then it's received already, so then it doesn't make a difference if you accrue all sales, and then you put it straight into the bank as I make a deposit. There's right. three ways to, to count for it. I'm gonna go what's and- the, uh, they, Okay, but let's say your check bounces. So how do they know who they got it from? Ah, uh, so that, that you're putting, let's see, are you sure to, yeah, I'm doing it here. That's the reason why you might wanna do a sales receipt and, 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 and put in a number. Uh -huh. or, you can, you can put in, or you can put in a memo. Because, uh, okay, memos, it goes for a check number. Okay, so I can and, add directly to this. Actually, when I, when I did before banking make deposits, right? Mm -hmm. I gave you a, you could put a, a check number right here. Right. So that's, the reason, that's the reason why you would probably do the deposit not in the bank window, which I showed you, right? So you, you really, you don't, you're not really using this window. You do control W, you write it a check, you give it numbers, you give it names. Mm -hmm. You want to make a deposit, so you could you could cut out one second. Um, you could cut out the sales receipt. You just go make deposit. You enter receive from. It's a you pick any customer. For hey, Ruben, I wrote Ruben on the line, and then it doesn't come in as Ruben. If I put Ruben, Ruben's here. I know. I you put Ruben sales, but why? Why? Yeah, maybe if you're buying for your own company, you want to record it. Then I put in a memo, I put a check number. Mm -hmm. Payment method. You get right. the payment methods here also. So okay. whatever you would get in a sales receipt, you could get here. Uh -huh. But the, and the benefit of doing it over here is you could add 10 people in one shot. You don't have to create 10 receipts, right? Mm -hmm. It's two steps. You, you made a sales receipt for one person, sales receipt for another person. You have five people. At the end of the day, you know, you, you found five checks in your table. You want to put five sales receipts or you just want to go? Uh, make deposit for Ruben, from Chaim, from Yankel, everything else. You get five people, five, five check numbers, and five amounts, and you got the total without making five individual sales receipts. You could do that also. Okay. Yeah, you could do, you could do it. I see. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Anything else? Um, yeah, just little things. Like, I think my check numbers are not really in order. Um, so it doesn't really make a difference my check number. It depends on how you sorted it. Uh -huh. Bottom line okay. is you have the same net income, you have the same balance sheet. Yeah, and, everything. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Have a good evening. Um, anyone else who have a question? Okay. Um,
That's it for the evening. Good night, everyone. Um, where does it go back to stop here? And we're gonna we're gonna end the recording. Okay, one second. Um, share screen again. You're gonna go content. You're gonna go reclassify transactions. Okay. Um, where is it? Go to not, okay, that's a, um, a second company. Okay, accountant. Accountant. Client data review. Client data review. Reclassify transactions. Okay, one second. Let me try that. Uh, accountant. Now you, go to, you go to PL. One second. Accountant. Accountant. Client re data review. And you said reclassify re re transactions. Yeah. Okay. Then you go to PL. You, you go to PL accounts. From, and yet to say the period from, from view, you mean hit the drop down profit and loss account? Okay. No, accountant. Yeah, yeah. The view, profit and loss accounts, and make the period for this year. So you have to have. Uh, oh, okay. So I have oh, to change oh, that from January 2000. I haven't figured out the dating shortcut. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Just go, go to the two. That's the main thing. Go to two, and you press today. So you have today. You have here. Well, it's showing up the 1365, 120, 77. Wait, how do you, one second. How do you do that? You get onto the to the two and add, what do you back? It, it, back it, arrow it, it, or right it, it, arrow, it, it, right click it? Again, you profit and loss. Yeah, 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 but what you were talking about saying you wanted me to change the date. Yeah, so. the, the date. So go to two, yeah. the two section here and press T. T means today. Ah, okay. This limits this. Yeah, figure that. I'm sitting there trying to highlight it, and I can't figure out why it's not highlighted. Yeah, I, I was telling everyone why why shortcuts are much better than mouse. You have to get the mouse. You have to highlight it, and everything else. Just press the T. It gets you to today. Okay. Now, That's in your office supplies, you're gonna break. You get a click on so office profit supplies. Profit and loss, and now hit office supplies. You're gonna drop down. You're gonna see your other two items, right? So I have office supplies. 177 is an yeah. expense. Yeah. Equipment is uh, 1700. Yeah. Expense uh, and rent is an expense for fifteen hundred. Okay, expense is there. Okay. Oh go now click on office supplies on the left window. Okay. On the right window it's gonna show you a breakdown. Oh one second, one second. Let's try that again. Uh and the oh, what did I just do? It just a custom. I just clicked out of it. Hold on a second, I gotta try that again. Accountant, client data review reclassify transactions, office supplies. So now uh, I have Nest Paper on the right hand side. When I click on office yeah, supplies, yeah. I have Nest Paper for 177. Yeah, you have two other things also, right? And then I have underneath it is, a, is uh, on, the, under equipment. Office. It's a subcategory of office supplies. There's equipment yeah, oh yeah. So, so, so at that, Office that, Depot. Go for 1200 okay. so and click, Amazon for 500. Because okay. click, on, click on that one uh, on Office Depot, for example. On the left side, on equipment. Yeah. And then you can see the right, the right window will show you Office Depot. You select yeah, I it. Got it. You select it like this. And you go like, to the bottom and you reclassify it. So let's say you would highlight it like I did in this paper. You would go to reclassify and change it to furniture and equipment as an asset. This is what you got to do. Hold on a second. So that's where I got it to. Oh, you mean, oh, press the button. Press, hit the arrow to it. Now hit yeah, reclassify. Yeah. You must it. choose an account to reclassify. Okay, I'm sorry. So I, no, I hit the button. Did, did, you, did you select an item? Did you select it or the check? Did you collect? I, I, I checked it on the Office Depot. And now what do I do for at, the account? At, after you checked it, you go to the bottom by re, where it says in the bottom of it, on the window. It says reclassify on the right, bottom right. But before that, no, in the middle, in the center, there is for all selected transactions changed. You're changing it to. It doesn't say that. Yeah, yeah, it does. Oh, for all selected transactions change. I'm sorry. Yeah. Why is that not? Make sure you 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 highlight you 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 select that invoice, and then you're gonna go up to furniture and equipment, and you're gonna save it as furniture and equipment. Uh, hold on. now okay now I hit the middle one. 
And where is furniture and equipment? It's what further up, close to the top. Must be up towards the top. Furniture and yeah. equipment, yeah. fixed asset. Yeah. And now hit the word reclassify on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. At the highly reclassify and do it again. Okay. For, do it again for the other one. And do it again for Amazon. Yeah. Now furniture and equipment is already there, so I don't have to do anything, and I just hit reclassify. Yeah, exa exa exactly. Yeah. Now, the, now you, there should have been three that you made in there around because there were three things. Well, there's another one there that says office rentals. That's rent expense. No, 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 no. Um, remember on the thing here. Okay, the copy machine for twelve hundred. What did you, how did you do it in the first time? That's how I just. That's the one I just did. The twelve hundred yeah, yeah. and, and the five hundred. The five hundred. What about the three seventy nine from Staples? Where Where did you put I, that one? Uh, hold on a second. I gotta go find where, where would I, where am I going to look for that bill? I thought I put it in the right place to begin with. Yeah, so, so go on your left window, what's in your PL accounts now? S sales income is 1365. Hold on a second. So let me go back to, to report. No, no, no report. No, stay in the same place where you were, where you did you classify. Same where I am right now. How do I get to the, how do I get to the? On the left pane, it shows you the breakdown on the PL platform. Where you were in client data review and profits loss accounts. You have your, I'm, I'm sure screen. So you see here. A profit loss account, sales income. Is well how much? Depreciation, meals, office supplies, rent expense. Right. What are your totals? Uh, sales income, 1365. Depreci right. Depreciation expense, 240. Oh, meals, you, so you, you have the whole year. Okay, fine. Yeah. Meals, 120. Meals, 120. Office supplies, 177. Yeah. That's net paper, I guess. Right. And then rent. 1500. Okay, so it could be that the 379 for staples you classified properly as furniture. As, as, as furniture. I must because, have. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, because, so. I tell you why, because it was furniture. So office furniture, you put furniture. And furniture it comes up as, as furniture uh -huh. and equipment. So that's the other ones so, that put equipment you didn't realize probably that's a creative equipment. Okay. So now, one so now, now, go, now, now go back to PL. So what now go to, go to report, company financial, profit yeah. and loss standards. Right. Okay. Ah, now I have the 1070, the uh, bottom is, is minus 1031. Mazel tov. And what's your, what's your... Uh... It's 1710 at the top, then I got yeah. the 250, 240, 120, yeah, yeah. 70. Yeah, so it's 10, negative 1031, perfect. 31. It's negative 1031. I'm just saying, I was looking at it and I was banging my head. I said, I, I thought I entered this thing right. right yeah. And, and you're telling me the numbers don't run and I'm sitting there saying I'm going oh. crazy. But I thought I was following along, but something didn't drive. Okay. All right. At least I'm not completely not. I, let me tell you, I, I, I have a, 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 an advertising business, a, a promote, okay. an advertising business, promotional, you know, pens, mugs, shirts, printed stuff. So I do have inventory and whatnot. I'm using another system that is exporting to QuickBooks, uh, uh, an office entry system that's that uh, order entry system and whatnot that is. Um, you know, written for the ad specialty industry, but it, do, it doesn't do accounting. You write the purchase orders, you write the invoices, I can set whatever it is, it's, it's, it's a good report for that. You export to QuickBooks. I started using it last year. My accountant came in, he said, yeah, 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 he works in QuickBooks. He classified my accounts and whatever it is. I export and the numbers don't export correctly a lot of the things show up with the correct invoice number. So when I learn a report, I see my open invoices. I make a pay, a, a customer makes a payment. I put in a transaction, I see it. Other ones, QuickBooks just makes up a number. Like all my numbers start 50,000, 50,001, 50,002, 50,003, whatever. Every job is another uh, number. Okay, no, that's account numbers. That, that's a separate thing. Just the chart of accounts. Well, my numbers don't jive. And my, and my, and my, I have some customers that, that show Half a payment. They don't show a full payment. They show, even though the guy paid me, and they, they feel like the, I'm telling you, I'm not entering four hundred eighty-two dollars and seventeen cents. But that's what it's showing up on my computer system. Like, like there's a glitch in the system. I can't figure it out. And I called customers to say, you know, hey, Schleim, you owe me money, blah blah blah. And they're ticked off at me because they're like, what kind of chutzpah you're telling me owe me money? I sent you a check. And, and I'm, I'm looking like an idiot. So I stopped calling customers. Right. And I, I'm, I got about $70,000 that I can't figure out where the money is. I know where the money is. The money's not in my wallet. Okay. And if my wife, you okay. know, so, well, I'm, I'm going broke. 
you're trying to make a listen. This is not part of the class. You want to, you want to try to trying to consult how to work with different software. I'm, I'm trying to figure out some of this. I actually have an accounting guy who lives in New Jersey, lives in Teaneck, and and he wants to come in to check my stuff over because I don't trust using my accountant anymore because I'm I'm braggers. If if in a short amount of time he he classified, I think he just like classified the accounts wrong so that when it transfers over to QuickBooks. It's not transferring over to the right places, and the money's in Twilight well, Zone. What, what was the original software you had? It's called Sage, whatever. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's written specifically for the promotional industry. For 35 years, I was using a different system. Right. That, uh, well, you, well, you just you, you made an export, but you, really, you, you have the actual software. So you could, one thing is- I have the software. I have, go, the, I have the physical invoices. Right, let's see, go, go back to the stage and print out a hard copy and have someone check over. I'm Don't trying to do that. that. I'm doing I'm doing a little of that and I'm calling people and this one is sending me a check and other guys are saying five foot. Hey, that's 10 months ago. Didn't I pay you? No. Well, go check your credit. I said, maybe I made a mistake. Yeah. And maybe I made a mistake, but if I didn't make a mistake, you owe me money and pay the bill. And uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 nobody I, wants to pay. I, I can't and now with this way. pandemic, certainly nobody wants to pay. Yeah. So it's, it's just gotten 10 weeks further in the hole. I've been trying to figure this thing right. out for a few months. Th this just happened at the beginning of the pandemic in March. I was in, I was in Israel. I came back from Eretz Israel on, the, on Monday the 16th and went into quarantine on, on Tuesday the